Glenn Ligon is a conceptual artist whose ideas and main driving force has always been to explore the power of race, language, desire, one's sexuality, and one's own identity in their artwork. According to Wikipedia, he likes to use intertextuality, in which the word is defined as to interconnect between similar or related works by using forms like quotations, plagiarism, translation, and parody in the work. Taking it from various sources like visual arts, literature, history, and but also using his own life as inspiration for his work. As also stated by Wikipedia, he is a, an originator for the term post-blackness. I do genuinely believe with my first review there needs to be a small history lesson for it so it will be understood better. My first review of one of his artworks is called Come Out, which is based off of a composer named Stephen Reich, who was hired to make artwork using the interviews from the Harlem Six, and was allowed to use a taped interview that was left over from a man named Daniel Hamm, who was part of that Harlem Six. They were six individuals who were accused of murder when only one of them actually was guilty. But from that interview, he worked the words come out to show them into an audio piece that slowly became a distorted audio clip that was only left with the rhythm and the tone of the work. After it was finished, and in which then Ligon used that, those same words, come out to show them in a painting that was a layered landscape becoming distorted, just like the audio clip that Reichs used. Ligon's work spans paintings, prints, drawings, mixed media, installation art, neon signs in which he uses them in various ways, and a few films, one of them that is from 2009, in which he viewed it as a failure due to the film that was used not being put into the camera properly, making it a black and white film with no real pictures. But at the same time, he also viewed it as a success by deciding to use it as a progression of light and dark as an abstract art piece. Painting has and always will be a core activity for his art. The artist who inspired him to paint are and sorry if I mispronounce any of the names, Willem de Kooning, Cy Twombly, and Terry Winters, along with his preference for wide reading, which is defined as reading two hours a day every day. For his paintings, he typically uses canvas for his work, but has also used other materials like doors. He also likes to incorporate unique text into his paintings by using the form of literary fragments, jokes, and quotes from the authors, in which he will work it into the artwork by hand with a stencil or sometimes charcoal, in which it also seems to be the main identifier to any of his paintings. The second review of one of his artworks is Notes on the Margin of the Black Book, in which he took the artwork from Robert Maplethorpe, Black Book, in which he arranged multiple erotic photos of black males in two rows, with a small framed text, from diverse sources being from philosophers, activists, curators, historians, and religious evangelists. Some are written specifically about Maplethorpe's images, others not, suggesting a variety of interpretations. An interesting point that was stated in Art in America was that when he first saw Maplethorpe's work, he was disturbed and questioned if it was racist. But after asking himself that, he realized it was too limited and the reason had to be more complicated than that. A third review 
for one of his newest artworks is called A Small Band. It is three words that are made out of neon tubes and aluminum letters spelling blues, bruise, and blood. The inspiration for this art piece comes from the same source as the artwork come out and show them, from the recorded interview of Daniel Hamm after Daniel misspoke in court and said blues, blues blood instead of bruised blood. The art piece was first unveiled along with the use of 42 other artists and with 54 artwork pieces in the exhibit Blue Black at the Pulitzer Arts Foundation in St. Louis, Missouri, in which he said he hopes it will be noisy in the exhibit to Hillary M. Sheets of the New York Times. The art exhibit was made according to him in his interview with the New York Times after he was at a site with the Pulitzer's director, Kara Stark, he saw a painting from Ellsworth Kelly and, for whatever reason, was hearing and imagining Louis Armstrong was singing What Did I Do to Be So Black and Blue in front of him. The art piece was from the art piece that was from Ellsworth Kelly called Black and Blue and a small band were the centerpieces of the whole art exhibit. The driving force for most of his work comes from the continued struggle for the equality of African Americans in the U.S. and later on in 1993, a call for civil rights of the LGBT community that Glenn Ligon was a part of. For criticism of his work, when he first started his work with the messages he tried to convey, they were considered to be aggressive. But after a while, and studying the pieces of the pieces, for criticism of his work, when he first started his work, the messages he tried to convey were considered to be aggressive. But after a while, and studying the pieces, the opinions changed. Some people saying some of his artwork was passive-aggressive or just passive. Another critique that was given to him from when he did the Blue Black exhibit. It was about a year after the shootings in Ferguson, and it was talked about how political the exhibit was. Though to be when it was created a moment of pure inspiration, once more being restated from another artist artwork called Blue Black by Ellsworth Kelly, and imagining Louis Armstrong was singing to him. For what I find interesting about his artwork is that how it can call attention to modern problems, problems that haven't changed much in the years, or trying to decipher the meaning behind his work through interpretation. What is also interesting on how his work can help connect a person to the past, but also the history of the work, or the work of another artist that Legan used as inspiration in his artwork or exhibit. With some of these artists doing their own styles of intertextuality or copying his work for their own work.